an unearthed tweet from Ron Johnson's uh, opponent, uh, Mandela Barnes, uh, who's the de- Democrat U.S. Senate candidate in Wisconsin, where he thanks the Ayatollah in 2015 for his tweet. Uh, he says the first tweet of 2015 from Khomeini is, quote, is uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Let that sink in. May this be a most wonderful year for you and yours. Uh, Rick, I want to go right to you on the ground in Wisconsin. Maybe this is why we're starting to see some polling that shows uh, uh, Senator Johnson moving uh, uh, that much more ahead of uh, of his opponent. I know it's still a very close race, but this is just absurd. This is really scary. What is going on with the Democratic Party? I mean, red alert. You have a Wisconsin Senate candidate giving aid and comfort to the Ayatollah, a man who pushes gay people off buildings, systematically denies human rights, is a Holocaust denier. The list goes on and on. And this guy is literally giving aid and comfort to the to the leader. I don't understand. The people of Wisconsin need to know that this is who is running. It's outrageous. What is the Democratic Party doing? President Obama is coming to Wisconsin very soon to campaign for this guy. I, 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 somebody's got to ask him, are you serious? We want to put the Democrat nominee up for a vote of the people when – He is giving the Iranian regime killer aid and comfort, complimenting him publicly. That is unacceptable. Where? What have we become? Yeah, because Rick, we're we're talking about this is not some a local small race. And again, those are all important too. But this is to be a U.S. senator, and he's trying to take out an incumbent U.S. senator, Ron Johnson. You're on the ground in Wisconsin uh, today. This idea that uh, again. They either blatantly have this anti-American view. I mean, they also chant death to America, death to Israel over in Iran. Uh, uh, That's very common uh, to hear. And these very anti-American statements that come directly out of the Ayatollah and uh, his supporters. But this idea that this is who they chose to be their U.S. Senate candidate to try and take out incumbent tells me a lot about, and if Barack Obama is still coming there, about, you know, who who they're okay with putting a D next to their name. Yeah, look, uh, President Obama had to negotiate with the Iranians. He saw intelligence that showed exactly who these people are. And and having, uh, you know, a former president campaign for a guy who is literally giving aid and comfort to the Ayatollah of Iran, the Iranian regime leader. I, I mean, you can't make this up. The Democratic Party should absolutely distance themselves from this guy. The money should dry up. Who is giving money to somebody like this? I, I, I need to know because they clearly are are supporting people who are un-American. This person, this Mandela Barnes, is unfit to serve in the Senate. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, thanking the Ayatollah uh, on, on Twitter for his remarks, as if those aren't just propaganda remarks. Like he's some kind of human rights champion. He uh, uh, in the Ayatollah, as we've walked through, he's absolutely not. They're they're pressing their people in the streets as we speak right now, and a wonderful year for the Ayatollah would be the destruction of America and our ally Israel. But Rick, give people an update on the ground in Wisconsin because everybody's following. You know, there's about there's there's a dozen or so states, and everybody's watching closely. Wisconsin is one of them. It's a seat we need to keep. Uh, how are things on the ground? You've been with Senator Johnson in the campaign. Uh, how does it feel? Well, last night uh, we joined uh, Senator Johnson for a reception with log cabin Republicans. This morning we did a veterans roundtable. Tonight we're going to be at Serb Hall in Milwaukee together. I hope that people will come out. Senator Johnson is working incredibly hard. Uh, He's not taking anything for granted. I think people in Wisconsin are very upset that this Mandela Barnes is getting so much money and support from national Democrats who right. clearly don't understand who he is. But uh, I think this race has always been tight, but it looks like uh, through the latest moves of Mandela Barnes that he's beginning to implode and people are beginning to, to leave him. A security issue I want to talk about with you as well. We've actually got calls on it because TikTok is the number one app 
in the world right now. It's the most downloaded app. There was a lot of concern in the U.S. Initially, it was almost taken banned by the, the uh, federal government. There came in and there was some kind of solution there with a sh U.S. shell company. But now they're taking another look at it because they realize that there's two things at play here. One, there's a Chinese law that says any of these tech companies have to make all the data available to the Chinese government. That means any data TikTok's collecting on locations where people are. But that there was an entity within TikTok, uh, one of their, you know, the, the bigger, you know, umbrella company that was specifically targeting some more high profile Americans who might be using TikTok to use that data, not to serve them ads, not to serve them the content. That's how they're trying to explain it away in their U.S. spokespeople, but to track them to track exactly what they were doing. And so there's this now new new push yet again to say, hey, do we need to look take a look at TikTok and maybe removing it from these app stores? Well, I think that it should have been done, should have been done a long time ago. It's a dangerous app. Uh, I'll say two points. One, as former acting director of national intelligence, I tell my nephews and nieces and everyone that will listen, do not put TikTok on your phone. I mean, there you go. I just want to parent. stop that for a second. I mean, there's some Rick Rudell former acting director of national intelligence. That's a good message for our audience to tell if they're not on it, but they're, they've got family members who are to get off of it. Look, um, it, it's a very dangerous app. I don't want to go into great detail of what we know, but it's a very dangerous app. But let, let's also be clear about one thing, Jordan. The Communist Party of, of China, they have authority over every business Every American business that does work in China, you have to have a Chinese partner. And that Chinese partner that, that American companies are working with has to pledge that they will absolutely turn over data to the Communist Party. This is known. This is a fact. You cannot stop this. And so I, I think it's really important that if you're going to work in China as a company, you need to understand the risks that are that you're uh, taking, and and I'm not suggesting that you don't, but I am suggesting that you take a lot of mitigation steps to to make sure that you're protecting your data in every possible way. It'll never be fully protected, but there are some things that you can do to mitigate that. You know, I want to take a phone call, Rick, on TikTok. Uh, Sarah in Maryland, online one. Hey, Sarah. Hello, thank you. Um, and Rick Rennell, hello, you're the man. Anyway, I have seen on Twitter some sanguine people say, excuse me, TikTok videos, you certainly seem to be pretty negative and trying to scare people in this country. There's nothing positive they show. We're all falling apart. We're all going at each other. And um, I think that was a good, I'm not on TikTok, but everything they send us everything they want us to see i think it's ultimately to just destabilize us as a culture and make us fearful that's all i have to say yeah so that's another uh, way that they're utilizing the platform is they're serving people content rick that shows their the, the united states in disarray well look i i do think that uh having a whole bunch of information is good i'm all for more information but but uh, there, there is a responsibility that we all have to take when it comes to information, whether it be recognizing that you can't get all your news from one news source, that you need multiple news sources to understand what's going on because media is a business and they're going to feed you uh, whatever they can to make more money. Uh, we have a responsibility. Gone is the day that you get to just show up and be a sponge and assume that everything you're you're reading or seeing is accurate or the truth. And so the responsibility aspect of media, to me, is the number one rule. Make sure you're not, um, you know, believing everything you see and read. Make sure you're not taking in the content nonstop and having it over leverage you, but have balance in your life and make sure that you are the one that is controlling what's coming in and whether and making yourself skeptical about the, the messages that you see and read. Folks, for people out there, too, in Wisconsin, and people who are interested in that race with Ron Johnson, a very important race to keep Ron Johnson in the U.S. Senate. Rick's on the ground there now. I retweeted that tweet so you could see how the Democrat candidate was thanking the Ayatollah of Iran and, and heed Rick's warning on TikTok. That's why I bring him on on these issues. He couldn't get to all the details, but said, you know, take his advice.
I don't have it. And make sure, you know, your kids understand who's behind it and what they're utilizing it for. And now see the U.S. reports that they actually are, were trying to uh, use, it, use it not just to serve ads, not just to make money, but to track certain high-profile individuals in the country, of course, serving anti-American content.